As I mentioned, these are the first full results since the $15.3 billion purchase of XL Group last year. The acquisition of XL Group for AXA increased the group's exposure to natural disasters and helped send profit tumbling by 66%. Will investors be questioning your strategy of this acquisition given today's results? Good morning and thank you very much. Um, it is true that uh, when you look at the operational performance, uh, and that's uh, the basis for the dividend, the operational performance uh, has gone up by 6 percent, uh, which is due to a very strong mix of uh, growth and profitability. You are absolutely right uh, that the natural catastrophes uh, have been abnormally high uh, last year. And since we have consolidated uh, for the first time the Q4 of Excel, which uh, in itself one quarter amounts to a normal uh, uh, natural catastrophe load to one year, we have experienced a much higher uh, loads than we normally experience. But everybody, all of the competitors, uh, were hit by this. Uh, Thomas, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good to see you. So, OK, fine. You're down 66 percent. But isn't this more a case uh, in terms of that quarter's profits? But isn't this a case of we've just got to understand that you've bought more risk and that that is the very nature of AXA now? There are going to be more rough and tumble moments in earnings. You can't control natural disasters. And that's what I've got to understand when I own this stock. So our, our strategy is very much in the transformation that we have embarked on. And you've seen that uh, the year 2018 was a very pivotal year where we have shifted significantly from the exposure of financial risk to the exposure of technical risk. And the natural catastrophes are clearly uh, in that category. Uh, the financial risk uh, equally uh, cause uh, volatility. And if you look today, our sensitivity relative to financial risk versus uh, natural catastrophes, the natural catastrophes overall are much less harmful on our solvency than a financial risk would be. Yes, and speaking of that financial risk then, uh, Thomas, higher volatility in financial markets, uh, lower interest rates in Europe, slower economic growth, you know, the mix does look challenging. Does it make you more cautious on AXA's ability to reach its 2020 targets? I understand the CFO this morning has confirmed those targets, but are you a little bit more cautious? It is true that the environment uh, is not easy. Uh, certainly, when you look what drives us, uh, it's very much uh, the interest rates, uh, it's foreign exchange markets, uh, it's the equity markets. We've been living with a low interest rate now for quite some time. Therefore, also um, after the financial crisis, the strategy of shifting away from financial market risks. So we are uh, used to that situation. We have prepared ourselves for it. And the strategic move towards technical risks is exactly uh, the answer. We are uh, well on the journey because 2018 has been a year, on the one hand, of large transformation, therefore also uh, quite a few abnormal effects, but uh, of a very solid performance, 4% growth of our revenues, 6% uh, growth in our profits. And I'm very confident uh, that we are well weathered uh, for this period. And uh, I will do exactly what my colleague has done. I will confirm uh, the Ambition 2020 targets. It's good to know that the CFO and the CEO are on the same page on, on results day. Thomas, tell me this. You, you made reducing debt your, your number one priority. What is achievable in terms of guiding the market this year, given the volatility that Nair has just outlined? So we have three main priorities this year. The number one priority is uh, integrating XL well, and we are well on the journey to that. Number two is, as you know, we have uh, quoted uh, our uh, U.S. live subsidiary uh, on the New York Stock Exchange last year, the biggest IPO of the year. Uh, we need to continue selling down. And thirdly, it's clearly the deleveraging. Our aim is to go uh, to a corridor between 25 and 28 uh, percent of, uh, of debt ratio. This, uh, this is possible. And uh, we have laid out clearly last year in November at our Investor Day how we are going to get there. 
Let me ask as well uh, about the asset management flows, uh, Thomas. You saw no deterioration for asset management uh, flows in the second half. Can you give us a bit more guidance on what you expect for the flows for the rest of 2019? So the asset management industry is certainly uh, challenged uh, by the market environment. Uh, in our case, uh, we are very much focused uh, on two main segments. Uh, one is the segment of fixed income. The other one is the segment of alternative assets, um, which are at the moment quite highly demanded, in particular alternative assets, because everybody is looking for long-term uh, illiquid investments. And I guess our very special profile uh, is uh, the uh, reason for us uh, not following the trend uh, of uh, the general industry since we are not uh, in the ETF business and since we are very focused when it comes to active equity. Uh, focused on active equity, which brings me, I suppose, to your sentiment. You, you run a pretty large company with exposure. We've just put on $15 trillion in, in the past two months. Do you trust this rally? Is it all down to, to the Fed's pivot to patients? Now, if you look, the fundamentals of the companies are, are very solid. So um, we, we should see uh, a, a very strong market. Uh, what has changed over time is the uh, environment, is the reactions, uh, is the macro uh, risk. And uh, the volatility you see is a clear function of uh, the nervousness of the market in terms of the macro uh, risk, in terms of the geopolitical tensions, but also in terms of the questions, where is the uh, interest rate policy of uh, the large uh, central banks going.